Welcome to the American Made and Paid Show, the home of free speech and independent thought. The big story is freedom of speech is really in trouble. The far left knows that at any time they can call for a sponsor boycott of anyone they despise. It is right here, right now, where you'll get your weekly dose of unfiltered truth. It's non-negotiable. Pre-existing conditions will be protected. This president has said this as a candidate. Insight. Very few people I know could have handled it. We can never, ever let this happen to another president again. An information that challenges the American way of life. Welcome, everyone, to the American Maiden Page Show. Zach here, back with uh, Professor Dreg and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear a baby in the background. We'll get it together, right? Once yeah. Time. No, but, she's um, trying to break down the fortress, so she wants to. She wants to get on uh, on the mic. Get on the mic. Yeah, <laughs> I know the listeners can't see, but Professor Drag has a really cute daughter that likes to participate. And I know the setup's kind of ghetto right now, but one step at a time. But uh, yeah, before we were starting off the show, I thought we'd talk a little bit about you know, Democrats and Republicans and uh, the shift. A lot of people talk about like a value shift, right? If it's not something regarding like racism or whatnot, or people voting, they always talk about this great shift that happened with whether it's the black community, them leaning, you know, from Republican to Democrat. And we've already talked about that with civil rights and everything, but you brought up something interesting, which is like a monetary and Christian shift. I, I mean, we were like, let's, we were talking about obviously Christianity, which we always do on this show, which I know some people get sick of, but hey, deal with it. It's our show. So, but um, what were you talking about when it comes to the differences in Democrats and Republicans and why there's been a predominant shift in the funding or the money that goes towards well, Democrat. everything in the mainstream is democrat like that's just yeah no exactly but but here's the thing i'm not kidding you uh when you really look at the demographics of democrats and republicans uh you just said it there is okay so right now at this point in time democrats make more money by a lot they uh they're better educated by a lot. So, I mean, hands down. So, you know, you just talked about the moral shift. Right. And that's the thing. There is a moral shift that's happening. And I was totally, well, I didn't care because I was an atheist. Uh, but now that as a Christian, now I see. So this is what's happening. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. Like, through Jesus, you only know, you only know the truth through Jesus. It's insane, but it's true. So I have very good examples of how this is happening. Um, Democrats, liberals, progressives are literally making policies, making laws based on Christian principles. And I'll give you a good example. Sure. Uh, so there's a, in California, there's a government code section one, two, nine, four, one. Everybody needs to write them down, down and look at it. Uh, the legislation hereby declares its rejection of the court of appeal opinion in Marx versus Laurel corporation of 1997. Okay. And states that the opinion does not affect existing law in any way, including, but not limited to the law pertaining to desperate treatment. The legislation declares its intent that the use of salary as a basis for differentiating between employees and when terminating employment may be found of constitute age discrimination. So basically this is a, you know, anti-age discrimination law. And, uh, and then it goes down to the legislation further reaffirms and declares its intent that the courts interpret the state statutes prohibiting age discrimination in employment broadly and vigorously in a manner comparable to prohibitations against sex and race discrimination and with the goal of not only protecting older workers as individuals, but also protecting older workers as a group since they face unique obstacles in the later phases of their careers. This is a Christian principle. Okay. Somehow, some way... 
I don't want to say that word because uh, 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 appropriated, like, you know how they say culture. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And people are like, oh, don't say appropriate, like problematic. That's another word. That but this is the thing. These life. are a bunch of people who do not believe in Jesus that are literally using Jesus's principles to get the laws done. This was not done by conservative Christians or any type of Christian. This was done by people who do not believe in God, do not believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And because these people understand Jesus better than the Christian people, these guys are in power. Think about that. People really need to think about how Christians don't apply Christian principles in their laws. That's the role of this government. Our government was literally founded on Christianity. It's in the Constitution, literally written in the Constitution. This law is a Christian law mm. to stop people from discriminating against the old. Right. That's a principle from God. How in the hell do we say as <clears throat> Republicans or conservatives, well, it's a private company. Fuck right. the old people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's the same thing. And they, they also talk about race and sex, but you know, that's code for gays. But again, as a Christian person, we don't discriminate against a person because they're gay. Can you imagine kicking out a gay dude because he's gay in your church? He's the dude that needs to be in church. Not me. I so, found God. I know Jesus. So yes, yes. That's, and that's the thing. I think that I, I have an answer for you when it comes to this law and why it would seem like the progressive left <laughs> seems to be the pioneers, you know, of making sure that people are treated fairly, that they're not discriminated against. Because, you know, you think about things like the Civil Rights Act, Section 7, EEOC, these are all Democrat-built institutions or laws, right? Now, I want to answer your question because here's the thing. The tough thing is the subtext to a lot of these things equality discrimination right and yes you're right we shouldn't judge as christians and you wouldn't throw a gay person out because they're gay but here's the thing too with christians a lot of them have difficulty and i struggle with this as well drawing a line in the sand and, and you have to you have to understand that this is just how people are when you say i do not support gay marriage they immediately think, well, then you just don't like gay people at all. It kind of goes all ways, right? But here's the thing. If a Christian were to propose a law like that, like don't discriminate against somebody because he's gay, then he's automatically called a hypocrite because why are you helping the gay people? It's like, that's not what I'm saying. It's, it's they should be treated as human beings, right? Not as lower than. So you can see a little bit about how the masses, and you have to be on. Yep, you have to sometimes be honest with yourself and go. Most people do not catch these things. They don't. They cannot separate equality from fairness the same way they cannot separate treating everybody nicely and not judging, and then being in disagreement about a way of life. People can't. I'm serious. Go down the street. People cannot. Like I can. I can say like I have gay friends, right, and I'll treat them like human beings, but. I think that it's a sin and I think that, you know, <laughs> homosexuality will kill you and it's, I don't support gay marriage, but eight out of 10 people, I'm telling you right now, this is the reason for these laws. Eight out of 10 people are going to say, oh, you just don't like gay people. It's like, no, I, I love gay people. In fact, I want them to be saved. That's why I'm saying this. But the truth often hurts and the truth often offends. And that's the reason why those laws are pushed by people who are like oh no i just want everything good for everybody but they don't really care and it's it is you're right like i think that christians are at fault as well you know we don't really we stay out of politics at least the, the you know the more the, the you know like the, the not the ones in name only but the real ones right simply because of a lot of these hang-ups right it's like it, it, it's the you if you went on the political stage and you said i believe everybody should be treated fairly and equally right Fairly and equally are, are not the same meaning, and people aren't going to understand that. I will go up there and say people should be treated fairly, but not everybody is going to be treated equally. Now, being treated fairly doesn't mean that they're going to be they're going to feel like they're treated equally. 
you get, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and you, you cannot, it's like when you disagree with somebody, you say, I don't support gay marriage. They think that that's judging. They think that that's discriminating against just by saying it, right? Like, you know, you say something against a fellow employee in the workplace, that's already claims for discrimination. So I know I'm kind of going on a ramble, but that's the reason why. No, 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 that's not a ramble, but, but that's actually very good because see what you basically said was, and I'm, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> it, <laughs> it's basically you saying, hey, I love my neighbors. That's the second commandment. That's the last commandment to love your neighbors as you love yourself. So, you know, hey, look, I am showing my love for these people, but at the same time, I'm not supporting violating the law, you know, the first comm uh, commandment because look, sure. cause you know, this, I don't know if I should say it, but I'm going to say it anyway, but look, being homosexual is part of the death culture because it leads to, because everybody dies. Right. And uh, physically we all die, but we're supposed to live a good, healthy life. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. That, that's why, you know, Romans is what Romans is, because we're supposed to choose a healthy, good life. Right. Um, so anyway, but that said, it goes back down to you are telling everybody, hey, look, it's part of my responsibility to not, and I mean not, judge somebody just because I know something that they don't know because right. you know, you hate to say this, but <laughs> even though a lot of gay guys are, are educated, but they honestly don't know what they're doing to themselves. They really don't. And, 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 and just like I didn't know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing to myself as an atheist. You don't know until you understand. And, and this is the thing I've been around churches, you know, my entire life. But mm -hmm. nobody ever, until you, nobody uh, ever broke down Romans with me. Seriously, because I was watching uh, Dr. House. It's a show called House. Oh, and yeah. I love that show. Man, I used to watch that <laughs> day in, day out. It's a great nobody, show. But he was, so they had an episode with Most Deaf. And uh, Most Deaf was in it. And Most Deaf goes, yeah, God brought you to me. And then, uh, and then house responded well god also made you sick <laughs> mm -hmm. but both are false god didn't bring dr house to most deaf and 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 you know god didn't make most deaf sick it one had nothing to do with the other but that's the thing nobody understands romans and until people start you know understanding that aspect these atheists and the, these hollywood writers and they're always going to use these same arguments, but that's a tangent based on. But, but so, but so here's the thing. Is, the thing. Here's the Christian. Go ahead. Okay. Well, so Christian people believe that sticking up, loving neighbors unconditionally, because you told me this, right? And yeah. this actually hit me about like two hours ago. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You told me the first dude in heaven was that thief. Right? Through Jesus. Through, yeah, except, through yeah. but that's my point. Through Jesus, this dude is gonna go to heaven. And this dude who was a thief hanging on a cross next to Jesus, can you imagine how sh sh shitty his life was? <laughs> you're trying to stop yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Jack is too no, late. No, you're, it's but, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Imagine all the thoughts this dude had. You know, whether he was uh some kind of weird, you know, pervert or whatever but he's still going to heaven regardless of his acts, regardless of all, you know what I mean? Right. The only thing that he had to do was tell the truth. That's what he did. He told the truth to Jesus. He said, you know what? You don't deserve me. And whatever he said, well, and he I, believed in him. Yeah. And he goes, you're the son of God. And, and, and I belong, you know, yeah. because I'm, a, and then he goes, no, 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 no. You know, because you believe in me, whatever, whatever you told me, right? Right. It's the truth. Think about that. All of these people, whether they're gay, drug addicts, whatever, all they have to do is believe that Jesus is the son of God and that he, you know, he's the word, that, like all that. You got to believe in those, you know what I mean? Like he's telling you the truth. That's what you believe in. 
when you believe that, when you accept that, you can honestly argue and legislate without condemning others. See, because people like Republicans, like Ted Cruz, he's a good example. Ted Cruz, he does not legislate through Christianity. He legislates through Republican principles and, the, and their bastardization of Christianity. Well, you, well, what's the bottom line to all this? Because here's well, the big... That's the point. No, no, no. The, but no, no. I was going to add to that. And say, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Because this is where I like it. Because now you're speaking my language here where it's... Think about everything that Jesus talks about in the New Testament and, you know, forgiveness of sin. And because of him, we have salvation and all that. All of it is unconditional. That yeah, is the key exactly. word. But here's the thing. When you legislate these kinds of laws through Republican principles, there are conditions. A lot of conditions. <laughs> A lot of conditions. Which is why, which is why it is the way it is. That's why, like, what I'm also trying to say is, whenever, when I broke down Romans 2, dude, there's some stuff in there that people just do not want to hear. It's not easy listening. It's not easy hearing like, you know, hell is in eternal damnation, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Like that's a real thing. And it's a hard thing that Christians, I feel like don't preach enough of, because here's the deal. The truth about the gospel is Jesus is here. So you don't have to go there. That, that's, the, that's really the whole point. The whole point of the good news is you don't have to experience death. Like literally, you, I mean, your body will die, but you know, you, you have eternal life, right? And, the, and the, the, the truth of the matter is too, is when we govern based on that, based on love, because think about that. Isn't that the, like in any story of, of man ever written, the most profound thing is one, a character going through the hero's journey that did something yeah, yeah. that they don't deserve and they did something for somebody else and that other person did not deserve it right? A free gift, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. You're, I'll take a bullet for you. That, like, that is profound. Like, say what you will, all stories come off of, of that story. That's the thing, right? Now, you take that and you take that and you legislate like that. You legislate based off of, you know what, I'm just going to love my neighbor. You know what? If they do something to me, I'm going to overcome evil with good. I'm going to show them grace. And then they'll, that's, that's what truly changes people. But what do we do instead? Oh, okay, uh, I'm going to punish you, fine you, throw you in jail, and take away your rights. Based on appearances. Based on appearances. <laughs> because that's essentially what you're doing. That's where discrimination becomes a construct. It, it's something that was built. Because here's the thing. If you didn't know any of that stuff, and you grew up around black, white, Asian, and you know some of those, those ladies that you meet in the South, and they're like, well, I'm not a racist. I have Asian friends. You're right. But the thing is... Oh, sorry. Did I freeze? Yeah, a little bit, but that's all right. I, I well, get the gist. What I was saying was like some people who have never encountered that are like, oh, no, I've got all races. I don't discriminate and everything. People laugh at that and think, well, this person's dumb because they, they don't, they're not educated about racism. No, no, no. The truth is you never had to be because we're not racist by default. Even God himself is not a respecter of persons. It doesn't matter. Discrimination was something that was created so that a certain group of people could gain more privileges than the other. That's it. Because equality is not fairness. And fairness doesn't mean everybody's outcome is going to be equal. But fairness is the main thing. And that, that's, that's all it is. If, if you govern like that based off of fairness and not off of equality, so don't, don't discriminate them because they're not equal. Like, forget all that. Govern based <laughs> off of fairness and you won't have these problems. That's all I'm trying to say. That's why if you read the Old Testament and the book of the judges and mm -hmm. how they were ruling, no kings, because kings are corruptible, none of that stuff. I feel like in the future, when God comes back, when Jesus comes back, that's how the world's going to be governed is similar to the time of the judges, where it was like civil government, because that's the best way. You hold each other accountable. It's like, just can we agree not, you don't take my stuff, I won't take your wife. Like, you know, it's just, <laughs> well, see, but I, and, and I was going to actually make that point, uh, but this, this might be an extreme take, but 
the reason why I don't believe in prisons and everything else is because, you know, it's, it's a bad thing to judge, right? I, and I just believe it. But at the same time, so what happens instead? Well, I mean, like, for example, uh, in Texas, some guy got executed the other day. Uh, and what did he do? He had killed his uh, wife and his stepsons and raped his uh, two stepdaughters, you know, who were 14 and 12. And uh, so in theory, does that guy deserve to die? Well, it's not really up to us, but if somebody, if, if the brother of the sister, the uncle in a rage killed the man, well, kill that guy. That's what happens. That's what the carnal mind does. You can't control, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, like I, you know, I believe in vigilante dress justice. I really do because, uh -huh. but not in the way Muslims do it, <laughs> you know, throwing rocks at one another because they're judging. But, you know, like if, if it's, if it is your sister, if it's your mom that got murdered and you're the son and man, you know, it's, that's how do you not stop yourself from killing somebody? Yeah. You know, or, or taking revenge. You know what I mean? It's not like you're judging. It's just anger. Just like you killed my, you know what I mean? And da, 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 da. And, and, and I don't know. I, I think that's why it hit me the other, you know, a couple hours ago about how that thief was going to go to heaven because he believes in, in, in Jesus. Because that's the thing. It's like the bottom God, the bottom line is forgiveness. Well, forgiveness yeah. absolves you of the acts. Yeah. Well, right? well, but check this out too. Think about this. Jesus was tempted by the devil, right? Supposedly. I mean, I, I mean, cause I, I, cause I feel still like I'm still, I'm reading it and it's kind of hard to understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm oh, thinking, that's right. You're not wrong. That's, that's right. No, but see, but the thing is God knew this was going to happen. Right. And so anyway, see, oh man, cause like, it's a crazy, like, it's a crazy fact of history, what Jesus went through. It's not, it's not even, there's something like extreme about what he had gone through, which a, a lot, like, this is how come I'm thinking about this. Jesus knows from firsthand experience what it's like to be tempted by the devil. I mean, seriously, it's, and think about it. He was tempted. He was tempted. He didn't act on it, but even Jesus himself was tempted. Didn't act, but because he knew how hard. So you know what I mean? That's why well, he was a man. Well, that's my point. So Jesus understands why we have to forgive people who act out on, you know, things like, re you know, like if my mom was murdered or raped and murdered, you know what I mean? It's like, that's street justice. You know, it's not good, but it kind of shows our weaknesses. But that's why prisons are bad because we are consciously judging people. That influences how we think. But when it's just something like, oh, man, dude, you did what? It's like, yeah, man, this guy killed my mom. So, uh, you know, I saw him. I blew up and killed him. A normal person would be like, damn, dude, you go to counseling go go see a, a preacher talk about you know what i mean because that wasn't right what you did i understand it but you know go you should talk it out because you know you don't want to suffer and, from people and, and i know that that's that's a hard hard thing right because that is the ultimate form of what would anger somebody revenge is like the nor the normal natural thing but it's also the carnal thing to do because what it feels good in the split yeah. second and then you're just like shoot because that's yeah. really it. It's carnal. It is carnal. And the thing is, those people that are able to go, well, I forgive. And it is what it is. And it's unfortunate. But I can forgive and move on. That's different because he didn't deserve that. He don't deserve your forgiveness. And it's the same thing with what Christ did for all of us. Is we don't deserve life because we're all sinners. Yeah. But that example of him dying on the cross is an example of how we should be treating everybody else. He took something that he, that you, you know, took something away from us that we deserved and he took it. 
he took the blame, you know? And it's funny because we've brought this up before where, you know, the whole fourth amendment comes from that story where he was brought before the Roman governor and all that kind of stuff. And I like that our constitution to a degree was built off of that. I will still stand by this because we should take it back to Democrats and Republicans. I know we tangent, yeah. <laughs> but what I was saying was, um, the constitution, yes, has Christian principles in it, but it's, it's also, the, the funny thing is, the irony is, the truth of it is, it's, it's not written by Christians, though. It was written by Freemasons, you know, which is close. It's kind of a spinoff, right? It's where Mormons come from and, you know, all that other stuff is from Freemasonry. Joseph Smith was a Freemason. But interestingly enough, they, they got it pretty close. I don't think it's as close as God's well, perfect law, but it's pretty I, I close. Think some Christians were involved, just like oh, of course, of course. Uh, what's yeah. that guy? What's his name? The 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 dude from um the Amazing Grace story. Yeah, you know, like uh, I forgot what they called them. No, no doubt there were Christians involved in it, but you know, but I, I mean, I guess influenced them. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. You're right. But I will say that you know, if you think about the heavy hitters, Washington. Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin. Yeah, they had wisdom. Yeah, they, they, so they just had, had yeah, but they, they were Freemasons. To understand yeah. what the other Christian people who were like abolitionists were talking about. Seriously. And, and that's, that cannot be understated because although they were young, but they were still like the abolitionist movement was a Christian movement. It was, it was. And that's the funny thing that Jefferson talked about with the whole Northwest Ordinance. We talked about this months ago in an episode that pretty much you know when people say well wasn't america had a problem with slavery from the very beginning thomas jefferson was trying to abolish slavery a hundred years before lincoln ever come came along so that's some crazy stuff yeah. right there all you got to do is tell people like it's not once america wanted to declare its independence from great britain it also wanted to rid itself of slavery so all this stuff about american crimes it's like obviously it didn't happen overnight i mean you fight a war for independence from britain but you, I mean, and then the thing is, they intended to abolish slavery at that same time, but it took, it, it, it had to take another 80 years for Lincoln to come along to finish the job. Yeah. But, well, but the Northwest Ordinance, just a historical fact for our listeners, look it up. That is living proof that there were attempts made to abolish slavery. And guess what happened? It wasn't complete. The North had freedom. The South had slaves. If well, not, that, if it hadn't been for that, the whole country would have been slaves. But the thing is like this, another attempt at trying to get rid of slavery was the three-fifths rule. When uh, a black person's vote was only three-fifths the vote of a white guy. Right. That was a compromise. That was because, you know, they were trying to end slavery and the other people were like, no, I don't want to end it. Da, 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 before, da. it would have been no, no power to vote, right? Yeah, exactly. But they but had see, the but, ability to vote. But see, but see, that was like... Uh, I don't want to say Freemasons were pro-slavery, but again, there's different types of Christians. You know what I mean? Throughout history, Christians have always been different. There's Catholics, there's like today, in today's day, there's Catholics, there's, you know, Pentecostals, all these different times. And, 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 and I, I would believe that Catholics would, would, would you know, they wouldn't mind slavery. <laughs> like, but in fact, if Catholics existed in the formation of the, they'd, trust me, they'd be like, yeah, slavery's okay. You know what I mean? They would. So Christians haven't always seen eye to eye when it came to, uh, because like I said, those Christians are, would be considered Chinos because only a true Christian understands why prisons are wrong, why slavery is wrong. You know, they know that, but a lot of people don't. That's why, you know, they're not welcomed in their churches, you know, and, and that doesn't mean you allow for, you know, fornication on the altar, but you know what I mean? But you don't stop fornicators from coming in, you know, because they need to hear it. They need to but see But here's the thing. People. If they fornicated in your area, you can say, hey, you yeah, can't you do stop that them. here. Yeah, no, but it's the truth. You stomp them. You have the power to stop. Like, there's nothing wrong with policing, but there is something wrong with enslaving. <laughs> mm, that's a good way to put it. See, but, but see, what we're talking about here, that's the thing. These are little things that oftentimes get overlooked, right? If you think about pundits and they talk about, oh, the Democrats are doing this, the Republicans are doing this. I told you a long time ago, 
that there's a book that my father recommended to me. It's called The Lamb's Agenda, right? Because, you know, the donkey is obviously the Democrats, elephants, the Republicans. Republicans. But the lamb is Christ. It, it needs to be separate from both of that. Because I remember even before, you know, before Christianity for you, there were progressive Republicans and progressive Democrats, right? Republican doesn't mean Christian. You know, I mean, living proof of that is someone like Kathy Zhu. It's like, dude, you ask this girl what she believes and she's going to be like, well, you can be a conservative and still be pro-choice. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, what? Uh, no, no, but it's the truth. I'm a good example of that. I was a Republican. Oh, I still am a Republican. I'm a Republican <laughs> and I was an atheist. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, but now no, I'm reading that the Lamb's Agenda thing right now. So it's why is Jesus calling to a life of righteousness? And But what I like about it is that it, it, ex- it extends the reason for why, why things are the way they are in, in our, cause it, it takes the, the aspect of our government, right. And the left and the right uh, together. Yeah, no, no, but that's the thing. It's like, serious. I'm going to read that book now, but anyway, <laughs> cause it looks, I'll send you a copy. Yeah, it's great. It's a great book. Yeah, and, cause I'm thinking, yeah, it's actually pretty cheap. Only two bucks. <laughs> Seriously, it's $2. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. The only thing that I'll say is this is that, I mean, because it's still, it's not kind of as, as in-depth. He talks about, obviously, the Christianity of MLK and all that. And MLK, I, I think, was a Christian, but he was a, he, he was a flawed man, man, just like the rest of us, you know? Yeah, it. no, but it's the truth. He, he struggled with drinking. He struggled with gayness. He struggled with a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, but it's the truth. But, but the, see, sometimes there's something humbling about that because we shouldn't treat MLK Jr. like Jesus Christ because he's no, not. Dude, only, that's the problem. That's the pro- you're right. That's what I'm saying. MLK, no doubt, a good man, but he was also just a man. He had yeah. problems too. He's not Jesus, even though people treat him like Jesus. It's like, yeah, well, yeah they, they think he's God, like the second coming. But, but, but here's the thing. Going, But the thing is, like with that example of 1291, uh, 1294 one, uh, government code. The thing is the difference between Republicans and Democrats is that they both, well, both parties understand that this is a Christian nation. Both parties understand that. But the thing is like this, Republicans tend to be hypocrites and hypocritical in their belief and democrats are very convincing to people that their atheist beliefs are christianity and and that's the problem so a lot of you know because think about it we were talking about the rich people are now democrats why are they succeeding economically well mainly because they work in tech you know they work at google they work at facebook and Google has successfully infiltrated the East Coast. There's corporate offices in, you know, New York, whatever, this and that. So you're able, so a godless company like Google has gotten tax breaks from, not the Republicans, because the Republicans are like, oh, they're, they discriminated against us and da-da-da-da-da and this and that. So we're going to tax them and treat them this and, and try to make it hard for them to do business. But on the other hand, the Democrats, the liberals, if you just look at Mountain View. If Google left Mountain View, Mountain View would collapse. And they know it. That's why Mountain View has been bought and paid for by. And Mountain View used to be very conservative. <laughs> it used to be because it was an affluent place. Uh, you know, people that used to work there like in the 80s and 70s. They didn't work at IBM. They worked, you know, you hate to say things like this because it's, it's bad. But mostly everybody worked at Moffett Field, work at Lockheed. They were, you know, defense contractors. Kind of like know, Raytheon, like, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's the truth. You know, yeah. 3M, they were making Bradley tanks. And so anyway, so Mountain View, the South Bay in general uh, of San Francisco, their money was made through government contracts. And, uh, you know, in the sciences or whatnot, you know, uh, uh, making better weapons, <laughs> developing technology for weapons, you know, like, you know, uh, yeah. space technology, uh, um, just all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyway, the 
Republicans never worked on doing anything as far as, you know, giving benefits to these big corporations. They never offered, you know, anybody any tax breaks. But who came along? Well, you know, all these big tech companies who didn't give a rat's behind about God or Christianity or making it fair for anybody. They don't. And they still don't. They have their own agenda, which is basically controlling everything. They want to have the moral authority of the world. Seriously, that is Google's agenda. Uh, People don't remember this, but Google used to have as one of their mottos, do no evil. Right. But they are the ones who are the arbor, like it's, they are the ones who are defining what is evil. Their definition of evil doesn't come from the Bible. It doesn't come from what Jesus would consider evil. It comes from their own opinions based on how they grew up. Seriously. If you ever met those two founders, it's just based on, I mean, come on, the, they, they are not, uh, they are not an example of moral ethical people, mm-hmm. which is why sexual harassment is done through arbitration and not through uh, a civil procedure. Because in a civil procedure, they would be held extremely uh, liable for you know, harassing the harassment of women at the workplace. Uh, so anyway, so big tech, you know, being our shepherd of what is morally good is not appropriate, but since they back politicians who pretend to be Christian and make Christian like policies, they get the support and then they're the ones benefiting from the economics because how did Google become so big? through multi-level marketing. A friend told a friend, told a friend, and they told another friend. But that's just how done. Think yeah. about this. Google became Google based on Christian principles of getting moral authority bastardized. And they did multi-level marketing, although bastardized, but they're still successful. And that's what they did. And that's how Democrats are now better educated and having better... Uh, Uh, job uh, employment opportunities because the Christians allowed, I don't want to say like um, uh, the false Messiah or, or, you know how like the devil is putting it. Yeah. But it's kind of like that though. It it really is kind of like that because you have this dude who's pretending to be like Jesus offering all these things Jesus would have offered but in an evil way that the people can't see it, which is really bizarre. And it's actually happening today in tech and the tech industry. Huh. Oh, you froze. are conservatives having trouble with on youtube Mm -hmm. they're getting deranked for telling the truth how come christian people are treated differently by telling the truth of the word well they don't want that on google because why oh no christianity is hate it's a it's 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 hate they're hateful against muslims they're that's a religion of hate they're persecuting people all the time Christians are the most persecuted people on the planet and have always been historically. Yeah, no, but the, but the, but YouTube says differently. Google says differently. They say, they say Muslims are persecuted and they say Jews are persecuted. And and they also say Islam is the religion of peace. How how many times did you hear this on, on the news? Oh, Islam is a nation of peace. Jihad is, is is some kind i forgot what they're what's your what's your jihad yeah you keep freezing
I'm rambling because you were froze for like a long time. But yeah, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. You froze too. What were you just saying? You want to repeat? Oh that? crap! So you didn't hear what I no because anyway, but the media and tech comes like Google. They are saying that Christianity is a religion of hate. Right. And Islam is the religion of peace. And they were bastardizing. There was like this media thing about what's your personal jihad. Jihad is war. But they were saying that jihad is, 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 is something done out of love and peace. Oh, and they had these bus, you know, ads. What is your personal jihad? Well, the problem when you criticize Islam or anything, right, is people don't answer the questions when you ask them. They say, well, what about Christianity not accepting gay people? They'll, they'll immediately say, they won't answer the question, hey, you know, they promote throwing gay people off of roofs and stoning them. And then yeah, they'll no, immediately- That's the thing. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? We are very accepting of gay people. We, should- we invite them to our churches and things like that. We, we don't try to kill them. You know, just because they don't believe in Jesus or anything like that, it's. But see, but even that is is it's a straw man. It's 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 a straw man argument. Oh, but what about this? What it was like? No, because there is no history of Christians doing this. But what about the Spanish Crusades? Catholics are not real Christians. That's a phony type of Christianity. As a matter of fact, Catholics were persecuting the real Christians. If you exactly. were the, you ever heard of the Dark Ages? That no, was not Christians that. doing it. That was Catholics. <laughs> no, but they enslaved the Native Americans in California. They made them slaves. How was that Christian? That's not. They're just. Hey, look. We just. We don't say anything negative against anybody because Christians don't say anything negative. You know, it's just, but now I'm thinking, hell, I'm, you know what I mean? Like coming from the streets, I know, hey, wait a minute now. We have to start calling people out. Like, seriously, we have to stop because that's how it's done in the streets. It's like, you got to call, even Jesus was calling people out. That's what, remember you said it the other day, Jesus was angry. He was angry because he was calling them out. Every time he's angry, he's calling people out. There's no. Well, he got wrong. angry one time, which was when people were selling stuff in church. Yeah, but you know, I guess he wasn't angry at them Jewish dudes. But he was. He called them out when he said, "Hey, about the divorce thing," and all this. He always called people out. You don't call people out in anger. You're probably right. <laughs> hey, but I'm not Jesus, man. I'm not, you know what I mean? I am not the son of God. So, you know what I mean? My anger is harder to control. But at the same time, <laughs> we got to not stop calling people out. And that's the thing. See, now, in going back to this whole Republican Democrat thing, this whole false false prophet that they are like this whole i don't want to say like big tech is like the devil but kind of it is it's like you know it's just a weird thing this tech this total acceptance of tech without questioning it has led to an over saturated of porn and oversaturated of you know stds being spread seriously how new is this hpv stuff how new is this vre stuff it's it's pretty new it's not like it's been around for 50 years yeah these are all relatively new diseases and notice how i didn't say hiv because that's an obvious one (laughs) that's obvious but what about hpv that's not new that i mean that's not obvious uh, same thing with VRE. That's also not obvious. And so there's a lot of diseases out there, but you know, because we are not true Christian people. Uh-huh. And when we were more Christian, like, trust me, these diseases were not happening in the black community. You know, HIV is rampant. Why? Because so many black dudes are in prison. You know, they come out with AIDS. It's just a reality. You know, there was a time, when almost every black man in San Quentin had AIDS in the eighties, almost every black man in San Quentin, like 99% of all, all black dudes had AIDS. Well, obviously everybody was in San Quentin's the dude, but the, all the black dudes had AIDS, all of them. Uh And when they got out, you know, they were giving it to all the women out there. Why? You know, because that's what happens. And that's why HIV is so prevalent in the black community, but nobody wants to talk about where did it come from? Where did it come from? You know, again, 
Now, if they were Christians, they would have been honest about it. They would have called out the prison officials and all these other people. Hey, look, man, these dudes got AIDS up in there. You guys <laughs> got to do something. And but that's why they're they're doing a lot of um, you know advertising now, where they like this black woman. Oh, I I'm on prep. You know, I'm not gay, but I'm on prep. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because you're dating dudes from prison. <laughs> they don't say that. They're just like yeah. selling it. Because it's, offen- it's offensive to some people. But the truth no, offends. True. I know, I know the truth offends. Believe me, Jesus offended. The truth is kind of funny, but, <laughs> but it's true. But it's, yeah. But it's the truth. You know why I can laugh about it? Because it's funny as hell. That's why comedians have have the best jobs in the world because they get paid to tell the truth. That's actually all they do. They get paid yeah, no, but it, to but drop some truth. truth. Yeah. Because, you know, they try to make it look like gays are all black, but, I mean, you know, but they're not. They're, they're gay in prison. <laughs> it's like, but it's the truth. It's like you're gay for the stay. That's what they say. It's, it's <laughs> You're gay for the stay. And I'm thinking, man, but that's how they get that AIDS. It's just how they get it because, you know, black dudes got big old thingies and they rip it and it's bloody all over. And that's how it's done because it's the mucus plug that's getting broke. You can get it in your mouth, you know, because it, there's a mucus plug up in your gums. Yeah. And if you have bad gums like gingivitis, like in England, <laughs> this is for the English listeners, you know, <laughs> you guys got some uh, messed up teeth. <laughs> And that comes with some messed up gums. So, you know, you guys are going to get it that way through your gums. It's just how it works. And so, you know, yeah. So it's just, look, women are always susceptible to it because they're receptacles. It's just a reality. And gay, I mean, not gay men, black men from prison give it to their girlfriends and wives when they get out because it's just a reality. That's a sad reality. But, you know, it's just something that plagues the black community that nobody wants to talk about. They're like, eh, no, no, it's no. Politically no. incorrect. That's why. Yeah, yeah, but that's the whole thing. But see, there's a lot of reasons why prisons are bad, but <laughs> that's one of them. They seg- uh, Anyway, it's neither here nor there. It's a tangent. But that's the thing. Going back to all of this, people in this country who are conservative, Republican, or whatever, and claim to be Christian, they failed as Christian leaders. They have. Because, you know, Newt Gingrich, is he really a Christian dude or is he just a dude looking out for his own celebrity, just like Martin Luther King Jr.? Martin Luther King Jr., because you said something earlier at the beginning of this podcast, was that the Civil Rights Act was, um, you know, whatever, uh, a Democrat thing. But it wasn't. It's always been a Christian thing until 1964. It was always like Eisenhower was a Christian dude. That's why he spent, you know, he made the freeways and all this other stuff because he goes, you know what? Hitler has some good ideas. You know, you know, why was Hitler, you know, so popular and so famous and da 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 da? It's because just like the Democrats today, why is Mark Zuckerberg so good? Why is he considered such a great person? You know, just like Sergey and the other guy, Larry from Google. Why are those two dudes considered such high, you know, moral, ethical people? Because, you know, even though they have evil intentions, they're doing it with good ideas, like Christian principles. I just, yeah. So you make that makes sense what I'm saying? Now everything comes together. I, I get what you're saying now. That's so, a good. Eisenhower, he, he, and, you know, he started the, freeways the u.s freeways in this country a lot of things he did was from christian principles and because he was a christian man he did it which was the 1957 civil rights act but the right the right one that was the, the good right one. one exactly the one that says no discrimination period that's it no more discrimination but then they redid it in 64. I, I still remember when we read that 57 civil rights act and there was like that clause in there that just <laughs> you just laugh so hard the one difference and because it's fun like the truth is funny it really is so but anyway so going back to all of this it, it's 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 big tech has taken control over the democrats and that's their false prophet is big tech and that's why big tech goes after conservatives because 
that is, you know, because look, conservatives are trying to conserve Christianity. That's what they're trying to conserve. Or the, the primitive- natural laws of how things are. Yeah, exactly. Christianity is the natural law. Well said. It's, seriously, that's natural. That's the laws of nature. We are trying to conserve nature, which is why, you know, I forgot who was the guy that did the uh, the, the the parks, but that dude. Anyway, Theodore Roosevelt. I think it was him. Yeah, John Muir and Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So John Muir. Was, Funny how I know that. That was random. Yeah, no, but yeah, because I'm thinking, yeah, because that, 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 seriously, John Muir was actually a Christian dude. He was a Christian he dude. Advocated and he advocated for the preservation of the beautiful places that we yeah. have in the United States. Yellowstone, Yosemite, Grand yeah, Canyon. All over California, like uh, the Redwoods. Like they call yeah. them the Muir Woods. <laughs> Up here, they're called the Muir Woods. No, but it's the truth. Yeah, and John guys Muir. like. Yeah, so it was John Muir and another guy, John Steinbeck, uh, 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 an author. But anyway, so... And Roosevelt. And Roosevelt. Yeah, so they convinced Roosevelt to do so. And that's the thing. When Christians honestly believe in something, they will get things done. But when you bastardize Christianity, you get what we have today. Social services, tons of black dudes with AIDS and in prisons. All of these things are done out of bastardization of Christianity. It's just how it works. So, but anyway, because uh, I know it's time to go, but uh, I'm hoping that people are honestly paying attention to what we're saying because I know people want to use God and Christianity in their own podcast. You know, whether it's you know Candace Owens or Lauren Chen or or what's that other guy, the dude, their boss. Uh, Glenn Beck. Oh, Glenn Burke. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn Beck is one of those fake Christians. You know what I mean? Like he's such a, such a hypocrite. And the problem is when they start ranting about Israel nonstop without even considering like the ramifications of your actions. It's like, yeah, just like, I mean, Look, I don't want to get too into it because, you know, they'll come after me. You just, you just yeah, hire yeah, like. I'll, I'll do it real quick then. Look, I'm all for Israel. I went to Israel. I had sex in Israel. It was a good time. But the thing is like this. We have no business giving anybody money. We don't. It's, it's, anti, it's what Jesus wouldn't want. Jesus wants us to teach other people how to make money, but for us to stop giving handouts to people. We're not supposed to do that. Handouts is the devil's playground. It's just how it is. That's long, and that's what we're doing in Israel. We're doing that in the Ukraine. We're doing it everywhere. We're doing it in Germany. We're doing it in Japan. And think about it. All of these countries are godless. Why? Because we just give them free money. They don't need to understand Christian principles. You know, you only understand Christian principles through, uh, through making things yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Through self discovery. Japan never went through self discovery. Why? Because we did it for them. <laughs> we made them into perverts. Why? And because we took away the military. We took away everything. We just gave them a boatload of money and said, here you go. Go make yourself some cars. And it's We're not funny. Put tariffs. We're not going to do any of that stuff. Yeah. And, and China actually has an uprising with like underground Christianity because that's just how oh, things go. I'm really praying. Like, I, I really do. Like, that's what I pray for. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's when my prayers have nothing to do with me, but it has everything to do with it. Like, because seriously, I honestly believe that's our last hope is what's happening in China. Seriously, that is. Some, well, some of the most hope. hardcore conservatives now you'll ever meet are like the Korean missionaries, the Chinese missionaries. Yeah, I'm not and, kidding you. And in, in the United you States, it's, it's the. Like, dude, you go to those Koreans that are heads of those Baptist churches, that's the last stand, like, right there. Yeah, no, but it's the truth, like, because, you know, like, when blacks were great, was throughout slavery. That's when they were great. They never gave up their faith. Think about that. You are a slave. You say that, and that's blasphemy in today's day and age. Black people fared pretty well right after slavery. It's true. Yeah, because they kept Structure. their faith. They kept their faith, yeah. And, and, and they were able to continue working for themselves and provide for others and themselves and their families. 
without a doubt, the greatest time in this country was right after slavery. But even during slavery, it wasn't that bad because they all believed in Jesus. How bad could it have been? Not that bad. You tolerate, you know, stuff. Just like Jesus tolerated the devil, tempted by him, but he tolerated it and he fought through it. Well, I mean, obviously he got beaten and caned and crap, but, but you know what I mean? He still went through it. And that's the thing. We had lost that. Japan never went through it. Germany never went through it. And that's why foreign aid is bad. <laughs> it's just bad. And so Israel doesn't deserve it. Not because we hate Jews, because we don't think anybody country deserves it. They should do it for themselves, and they do it through Christ. No other way. That's why our country is the greatest country that's ever been assembled or ever made or incorporated, because I guess this is a corporation, because it was done through Christ. And the real Christians, who were the abolitionists at the time, help ins you know, inspire the Freemasons to not be so crazy. You know what I mean? Because a Freemason is just like a Catholic. You know what I mean? And there's still, like, I have faith that Catholics can be saved. <laughs> just like a Freemason could be saved. You know, they can. They just don't understand. Look, they honestly don't understand Romans. It's just the truth. They don't. They don't get it. And they don't understand the first and second commandment. And they don't understand that, you know, saints aren't gods. <laughs> That's what I was telling you, man. When Con <laughs> yeah, last, exactly. My final yeah. thought was when Constantine took over and instilled Christianity as the religion of the Roman Empire, all he did was swap out his pagan gods for saints. Like that's literally all he did. <laughs> but you know, I get what he was trying to do. You can't fault the dude for not trying to, but you know what though? But I think that's the way to do it. Like you let leap, like, look at me until I turn 50. That's when I found, you know, uh, very close to being 50. No, I guess I was 50. Yeah, I guess like around that. You know what I mean? Because I forgot when we spoke about Romans. Yeah. I think I was still 49. But you know what I mean? It's like you got to leave people alone. Like you don't force them. That's why I'm against that gay conversion crap. You don't do it. Eventually, they're going to get tired of having ass polyps and gross crap come. You know what I mean? They'll get tired of it. And then, and then when they're ready, they'll go to Jesus. You know what I mean? Like it took me 49 gosh darn years to get tired of well no not really for me it was an intellectual pursuit seriously until i met you i couldn't intellectually understand why seriously because it makes no sense if you're a scientifically minded person it makes no sense why would somebody seriously why would a guy with all the power of the universe he can destroy like you know jesus had the power to destroy everything yeah everything like God. seriously yeah you know but it's the truth like he is okay so that they're the only ones that can materialize matter from energy. It's a fact. It, it was documented. They have it. Uh, he materialized matter from energy. That's how powerful. Well, it's omnipotent. I mean, God is all powerful. See, but, but people get confused with that. See, people get confused with that type of power controlling everything. They choose not to use that power. And that's where I struggled with somebody with that power. How could they not use it all the time? Because, but that's what makes them, you know, special. That's what makes God special. When you understand Romans and how to love yourself and everything, and how to love other people without judging, that's, that's the real strength. That's where like, it's, it's hard to understand that logically. Like, God, if you terrible? think about it, if you think about it too, just as my final thought, once you, even if you had that ability, right, and you didn't judge anybody, you also wouldn't destroy. You would create, and that is the nature of how the universe works. It's not an explosion. It's not like something happened, like chaos created that. No, it was the need for life to go on. Like, because the thing is, when you have that and you don't judge things, right? Are you going to destroy any, like even like ants, you're just going to go start killing random ants? No, you're not. You're just not going to do it. And it's the same thing with people. Yeah, no. And exactly. Well, sad, man. No, but it's the truth. And it's hard to yeah. under, like a lot of scientists do not understand that part, the unconditional love part to go through so much negativity. Because we live in a world 
that is so conditional. We're conditioned from birth. (laughs) So when something like unconditional comes in, you're like, wait a minute, what? And that's why we have kids. Because through your children, you learn how to love unconditionally and then you understand. Seriously, you really do. And uh, if God could have destroyed everything, he didn't destroy his children. That's why we're still here. And it's the yeah. same thing. See, it's, it's, that's the thing. You don't have to go very far to find out that all these mysterious questions that people have about the universe have been there all along. You just got to open your eyes, stop smoking marijuana, and stop fornicating, and you'll actually be able to see. That's really <laughs> it. Oh, man. No, but it's the truth. It is the truth. It's a dangerous drug. We yeah. are- Big, slow, and forgetful. Like, but I got to run. This yeah, was yeah, great. Do your yeah. thing, man. Was Have a great, guy. Thanks for listening to the show, everybody. We'll see you all soon. Take care.